Okay, um, here is a good example of an opportunity. Um, now, this is the order book. Um, I've got another tab over here, which shows the order book actually um, at a precision of 0 0.001. So this is like a sixth of a cent, a seventh of a cent, etc. right? So if you take a look at this, there's a total of uh, 6,266 down here at a sixth of a cent. Um, I'm just going to say 600 and then 602, 604, 610, right? So of the 600 uh, that's there, of the 600 that's uh, there, let's say 5,266. Let's take the entire thing here, copy that. So I'm going to multiply that by the average between all three of these, which is somewhere around 0 0.6028. So uh, take that, multiply by 0 0.006028, $339. It's actually $3 above where I can buy in right now because other uh, some more of my money is actually tied up in other stuff. Um, so, let's see. You see this gap here? Uh, you've got here a gap of six points. Okay? And then there's this is like a big wall. You can't really see it so well here. But... Yeah, if I do this... You can see it a little bit better here at around six, uh, 640. Um, there's a decent enough sized wall there. So this is 604, and this is 640 here. So 610, and then all the way up to 640. So 610 really only has that 53,000 in there. Um, and then 640 is basically a wall. It's not that big of a wall here, but it's a wall. And so there's a gap. You see that gap there? There's a six point gap. So that gap, basically I just calculate. So let's just say I had this $339 to put in. I bought 6,000. Uh, oh, it's back up to 6,000 now. Somebody replaced the exact amount. So that looks like algorithmic trading there. And this looks like a staggered order. A staggered uh, limit uh, limit sell order so um, and actually it's also got some uh, what's it called uh, absorbable walls so right if your wall can be rebuilt at almost the same speed that the wall is uh, not that the wall is being uh, eaten up at then basically um, you know you've got a standing wall until you run out of money. So technically it's not best to test this, I think, because if what would probably happen is it would, I would end up going in 6,000 uh, 6, and instead of getting that gap, so this looks like a setup that somebody already did. Like they're like, okay, I really just want to get out of here. I want to sell all this, all, all these off, but I actually want to make a little bit more money on the high side. Um, and so it would pretty much be impossible because this got placed back to get up to that, to get up to this actual wall, to front run this wall. So that's the issue. But like, let's say, let's say that it wasn't an absorbable. This wasn't like a three tiered absorbable wall. I mean, God damn, if this was a video game and this, this video game would be pretty intense. Um, but, okay, so let's say I bought in at that price, um, so I got 60,000 times 0 0.006026, because now that's gone down a little bit, the average, $361, okay, so... 
Um, so I take that $361, which was multiplied, and then I'm going to divide it by just one number before this actual number here, this, this wall. So 609, I'm going to say. So I'm going to divide that by 0 0.00609. Wait, something's wrong with my with my with my setup. I've got uh, Sixty thousand times point zero zero six zero two six three sixty one fifty six. Okay, now out of that three hundred sixty one. So actually, no, the three sixty one fifty six doesn't matter because I'm I'm sixty thousand in, but I bought it for three sixty one fifty six. So that's what that's my expenditure. Now I go back to that 60,000 number and I multiply it by 0 0.00609. 365.4. So here's the idea. If I was going to take that, that's only a uh, $3.84 profit. Considering that I was able to limit in and limit out, I would actually be at uh, $3 profit. So is this wall worth it? No, it's not. It's not a good time to scalp. Um, because first off, I don't have the actual funds available to do that scalp. But secondly... With the amount of funds that I have, I wouldn't be making enough money to actually afford the risk. And the risk is not just based off of some arbitrary number. It's based off of the fact that these three entries here are actually a three-tiered absorbable wall. I mean, that's a pretty hard uh, wall to break. It's a pretty hard wall to attack. Nobody's going to get through that. Um, and it looks like, I mean, someone might get through it, right? But you might have to have uh, 10 times that. You might have to have 600,000 amp to actually get through that wall. By the time you're in at 600,000 amp, right? Like, let's say the, the, the wall stays there, right? Um, it keeps reabsorbing you. It keeps reabsorbing you. It keeps reabsorbing you. It keeps reabsorbing you. You might be able to get the wall to move back a little bit, but if you get the wall to move back up, guess what happens? You make less profit by jumping, by front running the other wall. <laughs> so the game of walls is pretty, it's not necessarily complicated. It's just you have to know what types of walls are there, if those walls are going to actually, uh, for instance, just be a normal wall, if it's a weak wall, if it's a strong wall and if it's a, an absorbable wall. And the reason why having more liquidity here, because you've noticed like none of this has changed really in the last 15 minutes. Um, so the reason to actually have a uh, high liquidity is because nothing's happening here. I'm technically like the only person right now trying to play this game. Everybody else is actually just waiting for the next move to be made. Okay, this bot here is waiting for uh, someone to take it to try and get in there. Um, but they are going to get in, and then the price isn't going to move anywhere. Now, is there more? In actuality, this 60,000, look at that, 68, oh, 682,144 on the bid side at 599. So it could be safe to assume that there's like 700,000 actually hidden 
behind these three walls. There's, it's almost as if like, instead of being absorbable, the wall is like you break part of that wall, and then the wall has like a whole bunch of a whole bunch of it that's actually below ground, and it just moves up, um, back up to a specific point, back up to a specific point, and back up to a specific point. Um, so that's a, that's an interesting dynamic of the order book because you know we don't want to be we don't want to be attacking a wall that's not going to go away and we definitely don't want to attack a wall by ourselves because i mean there's no there's no way that that price is going to move within the next 15 minutes uh unless there's somebody else playing the game unless there's somebody else like eating up this bid somebody else helping me eat up the ask right but if somebody's eating up the bid that's like that's like, uh, since I'm trying to buy in, that's people going against walls on my side. Now, that's my team. So, so right. So my team is this. Uh, the other team is this. And I'm going to go, okay, I want to I wanna go in. I want to try and attack the first wall that's there, see if I can get through it or not. But if somebody's helping me, then that's much better. If no, then, I mean, why would I even try to attack the wall? There's a pretty big enough wall right here so that this doesn't actually move down in any in any point in time that's going to be larger um, than this. So, so yeah, I mean, or sooner rather than, than this. So that's like, yeah, I mean, there's much better opportunities to be to be had in other places. So in this case, if I was the manager i would just say ignore this one um for now wait until it gets down somewhere near here 580 so that means that like there's some significant some significant action going on in the market people are buying through this these bids or rather they're selling through these bids um, on the market side and yeah bam 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 sold 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 and we get down to 580 now if this wall didn't move if it didn't come back down to match this 580 because right you see it's only one point above this 599 but if this wall moved actually down to say 581 well then we would be in the same position and that means that there's actually uh, pressure from the maker side to push the market down so that's that's also a part of the dynamic like if there's a bot on there that's just like continuously sniping the point continuously sniping the point um, you know, it's the same thing that our bot would actually be doing, but it depends on which side the bot is on. If the bot's trying to buy in, well, then it's not a good time because there's too, too much of a defense there. Um, and it's not going to find any good opportunities to go, uh, uh, hey, um, now I want to sell again. Now I'm back on this side. And so I get over to this team and I'm like, okay, I want to sell. I want to make some decent money off of this. So before it actually goes in, it needs to already have analyzed what's going to come out, how, where it's where it might come out. Now, it doesn't have to know exactly where it's going to come out because that might change. But it'll stop the loss and it'll also try to maximize its possibility of getting out at some good rate. So it's going to have to check to see if the force, the first orders on here are some sort of a, a, an extra wall that's been put up. Because once I'm on this side, then I'm relying on the people from this team to come up and try and break my wall down. I mean, really, you're not actually building a defense for yourself, right? You're building a defense, like your wall is a defense for the price movement in that position. And it's in sort of an overall effect. 
Now, the price movement, it doesn't actually matter um, if it goes up or down in, the, in my case. Like, I really just want to say, uh, hey, I've got these, uh, I want to get in here, or I want to get in here, and then I want to get out here. So I want to get in here-ish, and I want to get out somewhere up, up here. Uh, before this wall now now I mean look at that there's a humongous line here to get in okay um, you could market order in or sorry this is a humongous line oof sometimes I get confused by this whole thing but basically okay let's just step by step this um, I've got a bid here for 682,000. That means if someone wants to sell, they're gonna have to sell down here, right? Yeah, if one, someone wants to come in the market and sell, they've gotta sell down here. If I wanna buy, like if I go here and I say buy, I want 60,000 amp, at 0609 so if I was gonna do that then I would actually end up on this side because I'm limit buying in uh, so limit oh shit you can't even see that part of it um, no matter anyway uh, I'm gonna be limit buying in here so what that means is like I don't want to have I'm gonna be up. I'm gonna be on here. So if I limit bought in at 609, that would actually move everything up, wouldn't it? I'm actually not sure. Kind of want to try it, but I'm too. I don't. It's not a good time to try and do this right now because of this whole weird defense that's going on. Because once I get on the other side, I gotta sell. So I gotta put my wall up here somewhere where it's gonna, where it's probably gonna get taken down. Uh, you know, because there's no point in having a wall up there forever. The whole point of the game is that when you make a wall, well, you're not really making a wall. You're just you're just trying to exit, but you're trying to exit right before a bigger a bigger person is a bigger volume of exit is going on, so that yours gets taken first. That's the front running thing. Um. Anyway, so you want to get taken back out from here to the other side. You want to be back on here, you want to have dollars again, and you don't want to be in on this uh, on this amp. So anyway, that's just a, a quick video with some notes about uh, how how I've been thinking about order book strategy um, and, and order flow stuff. And uh, yeah, gamifying it as much as possible because it really is a game, you know. It's a very fast-paced game in some in some uh, instances. Here, it's really not. It's just uh, it's that. But if we go over here, I'm going to change this over to BTC USD, which is actually down a bit right now. And I'm going to turn that precision up. Wow. Okay. So you got here. You've got a pretty decent wall. You can see these numbers are changing. But the problem for me with uh, with BTC is that I don't actually have enough money in my account to be messing with BTC really and making a decent profit. Because if I have 10% of this, if I have 0.1 BTC, that means that this only this is only a one dollar change. Uh, if I have Yeah, it's not even a one dollar change, actually. No, there yeah, it's a one dollar change. So if I had to have a thousand dollars, this would be one oh six zero and one oh six one. And look at how much Bitcoin is on there. And look how fast the move the movement of the market is going. It's really there's not people buying through this a lot right now. Like there's they're buying through some of it. You can see these numbers changing. They're eating through those walls. But 
it's pretty well matched on both sides of this. If I bring it, or sorry. Okay, but well, okay. So if I put it up to twenty bucks, then that that gets binned into this side, right? Bring it down to five. You can see that actually this is staggered a little bit. This is, uh, and if I bring it down to one, then you can see, bam! Like, look at that wall right there. Uh, so if I were to if I were to mark it by in, I would actually have, because the spread is one cent, I mean, it's the lowest spread it could possibly be. So that would be a great time to mark it by in, because I would I would be able to get this price or something. Just, yeah, I would be able to get this price. And obviously, I wouldn't be buying in that full 10 Bitcoin. Um, yeah. So, but even this, this is slow. Um I can change this to one minute, and you can see there's stuff going on, but you see these minutes where there's, like, very little going on. There's quite a few of them. Out of the last, uh, out of the last 28 minutes, there's, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, uh, about, about half. Half of those minutes actually have such a low amount of market action going on uh, that, you know, it's not even whatever. The market action is what moves everything. The, the limit action uh, provides liquidity, and the market action uh, moves, moves the price. So I think that's it for this. It's probably gone on a little bit too long, but it's going to be good notes. And yeah. More later.